God, I'm asking you to come change me into the man I want to be. I'm probably going to get a copyright strike for this, but it's worth it. There's a prayer that you can pray that you might want to think twice about. It's a good prayer, but it's also a difficult prayer. Not the prayer itself, but what results from the prayer. And that is kind of like the prayer that David prays in Psalm 51. Notice what he says. He says, have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness. He says later, he says, blot out my transgressions. Well, that's not an easy process for us. For him, it is. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. He says, I acknowledge my transgressions, which you must do if you want to grow in the Lord. He says, and my sin is always before me because if you are truly repentant, it's going to bother you. I don't care how far along it is. Even when you look back five years ago, five decades ago, it doesn't matter how long it is. Sin should bother you. And he says, against you and you only have I sinned, which is why it's bothersome which is why it's hurtful. But notice what he says. He says in verse seven, he says, purge me with hyssop. I don't know if you've ever been purged or you know what being purged felt like. I'm going to give you an example of that. And my prayer that led this, led this to happen to me, he says, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Than snow. And here's the hard one. He says, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken. Here's the problem. No one wants their bones to be broken. No one wants to suffer. No one wants to go through. You just want to be made whole immediately. Now, for me, I told you about my little federal tour and it was self-induced. It was all my fault. No one's to blame but me. Well, preceding that is me having this prayer, this time with the Lord. Lord, fix this. Fix all these different things that are wrong with me that's going on. Lord, I want to do better. I want to be better. I want to be past this. Problem is, though, you don't get to tell God how to fix it. God is going to work in you. Now, if you have fully submitted, if you have a repentant heart, if you're his, he is going to chastise you. The Bible says that as he is a father, Hebrews 12 tells us, he is going to chastise you. Why? Because he loves you. And sometimes his love doesn't feel good. You, you've seen the old saying, we used to hear it all the time when we were growing up, when your parents are about to discipline you, they would say, it's going to hurt me more than hurts you. And you say, yeah, right, because this really hurts. Well, in this case, this really hurt. And I'll never forget when I was in prison and I was laying in my bunk. This was early in the morning. I mean, early in the morning, two or three in the morning. And I just woke up and I had my little radio on and it was tuned to a country station. And I'm not one of those that that is looking for God to come and speak audibly uh, to me, that I can hear his voice. And if someone were in the room, they would hear his voice. That's not me. I don't, I don't necessarily preach that, but do I believe that God can send things your way, give you messages, uh, lead you and press upon you? Well, this one particular night that he, he did so, and I mean, did so graphically so much so that it left an imprint on me. Uh, there is a country song that I don't know if you all have heard before. Uh, if you're not a country music fan or, or what have you, you probably haven't, maybe you have, by a man by the name of Chris Young. He's a country music artist, a star, as a matter of fact. Uh, he had a song, and this song, I just happened to, the, I woke up one particular night, and I do believe that it was the Lord waking me up, and for some reason, uh, I pushed the radio. I didn't even mean to push it. I didn't, I didn't intend on pushing. I just rolled over and hit the button, and the song came on. The earbuds were still in my, my, my ear, and the song came on from the very beginning. So much so, so hard was it for me to even even go back to sleep. The song came on twice. And when I say twice, um, I clicked another button, turned to a different station, and this song came on again. And then the next night, it's almost like they kept sending me this song. What was the song? Well, this song resonated. It's not a Christian song, but the words resonate. So I want to kind of play this for you. Now, this is where I might get the copyright strike. Uh, and this is what I think was kind of the prayer um, or God speaking to me and just, have you ever heard a, had a song that just said what you wanted to say, but just said it better and with music with a better voice? Well, this was the case. The song is called The Man I Want to Be, and this was really uh, my prayer. Got him down here on my knees, cause it's the last place left to fall. Begging for another chance, if there's any chance at all, that you might still be listening, loving and forgiving guys like me. Now, let me pause it. Uh, 
and I'm sorry, you're going to have to go back. And if you want to hear the whole song, just look up the song to hear it in its entirety. But the song, when I hear the song, even to this day, it's one of those songs that just does something to me. Uh, he says, God, I'm down here on my knees because it's the last place to be. Listen, when you are fully submitted to God, especially if you are in sin, if, you, if you're coming out of a sin, if you're trying to get past a particular stronghold, God has a way of putting you on your knees put it, or or putting you flat on your back. Same way. Because all you have left is to look to him. Sometimes God will give you an opportunity to come to him first. And then we don't. We go to this person first or that thing first or that thing second. And then God is last. And so what he'll do is oftentimes knock everything that you could possibly go to out of the way. And so he's only the only option. You are left to be faced with him. That's your only option. And so he says, I'm down here on my knees because it's the last place to be. Um hoping that you'll still be forgiven guys like me. Lord, do you still, will you still, because when you're so distraught and so bothered and overcome by your sin, you're wondering, Lord, are you still going to forgive me? And then this next line is the line that just, just tore me up. When you realize that everything that you've done and been working for, it didn't matter. It, 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 it led you to nowhere. As a matter of fact, it led you to ruin this line. This next line, it broke me. I've spent my whole life getting it all wrong and I sure could use your help Cause from now on I want to be a good man I'm going to pause that again To know that you spent your whole life Your whole life getting it all wrong Yeah, there was some good There were some things that, you know, you learned from His point is the direction that I was going, the goals that I wanted, they were not in line with his. That's that's what it. That's what spoke to me. Uh, I spent my whole life trying to do me. I spent my whole life trying to get what I wanted, and so now here's the result. Here is the result. Not just the wreckage in my life, but also what's happened with my family. And he addresses that in the next in the next verse. But the chorus is, "I want to be a good man." I do like I shouldn't, man. I want to be the kind of man. Me I want to be a strong man and admit that I was wrong, man. God, I'm asking you to come change me into the man I want to be. When you make that prayer, God, come change me into the man I want to be. And that's if the man that you want to be is a godly man. And that's what that's all I ever really wanted. But again, I thought that. I could figure out how to do things on my own. I could, I can get where I need to be just fine without you, Lord. I'll call on you when I need you, or when I'm in help, when I'm in, when I'm in need of help, when I'm in, uh, when I'm in desperate need of you to step in. But God, I, the man I want to be is the man that you want me to be. If there's any way for her and me to make another start. Now, this right here broke me down even worse because the person after God uh, that brought me the most pain uh, in terms of who I hurt. Yes, I love my children dearly, but the person that I hurt the most and the person uh, that I want to fix the relationship more than anybody else was with my wife. And so as he says, uh, is there any way for me and her to make another start? That part, uh, it, let me pull it back a little bit. That part just... It caused me to cry. As a matter of fact, uh, it's almost like he desired, he he looked into my record and decided to make a song about me. me to make another start. Did you see what you could do to put some love back in her heart? Because it's going to take a miracle after all I've done to really make her see. I want to be a stay man I want to be a brave man I want to be the kind of man she sees in her dreams that's all that that is my goal matter of fact truth be told that it really should be every man's goal in his marriage that you want to be the kind of man that she that your wife sees in her dreams everything everything that she can want and hope for in a man she can find you not superman not perfect man but but that she thinks about you. That's that's what I wanted. God, I wanna be your man. 
And I want to be her man God, I only hope she still believes In the man I want to be And now, I'm not going to play the rest of it Again, I'll, I'll let you guys go and look it up It's Chris Young, the man I want to be um, But that just, it resonates with me And if you pray If you pray, Lord, fix me Whatever it is the issue is uh, and you mean it and you give it to him, he'll do it. Now, is he going to do it the way you want? No. Nine times out of 10. Nope, he will not. As a matter of fact, uh, what he's got in store to purge you, as David says, uh, purging. Does, does, it, does it sound does it sound like a, an enjoyable experiment uh, experience? Being purged doesn't sound nice, doesn't sound good. But what it does is it brings you face to face with yourself. Uh, and it gives you some clarity to see. And then this song, again, it was weird because the night that I woke up and heard this song, 2 or 3 in the morning, it just came on. Turned to the next station, just clicked the button to the next station, and it came again. And then the next day. And it just kept coming. And so I'm, I've got the song memorized because <laughs> it speaks to me. And so the man that I want to be as long as the man that I want to be or the woman you want to be lines up with the person that God wants you to be and you pray the prayer for God to fix it, to change it, to get you out of it, to grow you. Because if you're a believer in him, that's what you're going to want. You're going to want for anything that's like the world that's in you to be out. Take whatever's in me, Lord God, that's not like you, take it out. And that was my prayer. He just didn't do it the way I wanted him to. Lord, I had some, God, if you would have consulted me, I would have given you some suggestions. I would have said, Lord, fix it this way. Lord, do this. Give me this. Give me that. And I'll be happy. No, God knows how utterly foolish I am, how fallen I am. He knows exactly what I need, how to do it and how to do it in a way to where I appreciate. This is how you know you have a good a good parent who, when he disciplines you, you even appreciate the discipline that you got, even though it was painful and though you don't want to go through it again, you wouldn't change it for anything in the world. And so the man that I want to be, am I there yet? No, but he's getting me there. Uh, and so, yeah, he used Chris Young to do so, but it was really the fact that he's working in me, purging me, getting me there. And so my, my prayer is that more people who are going through that would even have the courage, the boldness, the audacity to pray a prayer like that, Lord, fix me and then mean it. That's the most important thing, that you mean it because you have a repentant heart and you desire for nothing that's worldly, that's ungodly to be in you. And so all of that to be purged out of you and look more and more like him, because the Bible does say that he has chosen us to be conformed to the image of his son. Well, that's a process. And sometimes it's a painful process in many cases. And so if you're up to it, if you're bold enough, if you're daring to pray that prayer and mean it, God will do it. And I can promise you this, that in the end, you will be grateful. Amen.